Adventures. Greetings all, Chook here from Chook's Outdoor Adventures. Well, I recently got a Super Black Hawk Hunter in 44 Magnum, very long, seven and a half inch barrel here. Single action, I'll do some more videos uh, on this piece. It does come with a scope that I mount on it sometimes. Really fun revolver, but I was thinking, okay, I've got a 44 Magnum with a longer barrel, and I recently released that video on the study where even in the update, they had 37 cases of bears killed, uh, you know, during encounters with outdoorsmen, hikers, hunters, whatever, and all 37 cases where the 44 Magnum was used, it was effective and successful. So uh, 44 Magnum is no slouch. It has been tried and true over the decades by outdoorsmen. So I was thinking, you know, I've got this, uh, and this I still is kind of my go-to outdoor revolver. This is the Ruger Toklat, of course, in 454 Casul. Shorter barrel, five inch barrel. I, I think it's a good compromise in terms of barrel length and uh, handability, being able to move it around in close quarters. So, but I was thinking if you don't have a 454 Casul, you may not need to get one uh, because you may get power, the power of a 454 Casul with a longer barrel in your 44 Magnum. And I've always said 44 Magnum is kind of the the smallest caliber you want in a revolver for bear defense. So for this test, I think I got some pretty even ammunition here, both Buffalo bore hard cast um, and surprisingly very close. So the 454 Casul, we have 360 grain hard cast and the Buffalo bore heavy 44 Magnum plus P plus. So they've made it even hotter than normal 44 Magnum and it's 340 grain hard cast. So you're only 20 grains shorter on the 44 Magnum. So we're going to go out with Chuck from Alaska Ballistics. We're going to shoot these over the Chrono, have some fun blowing into some watermelons, and we're going to see how close the 44 can get to the 454 in a longer barrel. I think that it's a great option. If this is all you have, you may not need a 454 because if you've got a longer barrel, you're going to get good velocity. That's what I think. But let's test it out. Well, what a lineup we have today. Here it is, the Ruger Super Black Hawk Hunter. They call it the Hunter because, as you can see, they have machined grooves here in the rib of the top of the barrel here that you attach scope rings to, and they provide those scope rings in the box. So, uh, of course, this is a single-action firearm. Um, see, it's empty there. Um, do I prefer a double action? Absolutely. But I mean, this thing is beautiful. Talk about an outdoors stainless steel heavy revolver. It does have the Western style grip, which is very comfortable. It's not my first choice in a Western style grip because man, the barrel is just really high up there, uh, but it is very comfortable, uh, beautiful wood grips. You just gotta love it. Seven and a half inch barrel. It's got that fixed ramp front sight, adjustable rear sight. Cold hammer forged barrel. Does have a modern transfer bar, so it's not gonna go off on you. Just beautiful. And of course, the toe clat. This is a custom one. It's been bead blasted and has a trigger job, but Wild West Guns did that. Obviously, a little more modern grip style. Barrel seats slightly lower, I feel. Hogue grips, which I am thankful for because this would be very painful to shoot with wooden grips. And, of course, the five-inch barrel. So, as I said, we're going to compare these ammo. The 454 Casul, 360 grain, just a big old pill versus the 340 grain, which is, if I can get this open, not too shabby either. So that's what they look like side by side, 454 and 44 Magnum. Let's go test them out. Roland. 
All right, my name is Chuck. I'm from the Elastic Ballistics Channel. In case you ever hear me make fun of Chuk, we're actually good buddies. He's a good man and a good friend. And even though I forgive his blasphemy about the 270 Winchester. But anyway, I'm going to shoot over my chronograph. And so because Chuk makes stormtroopers look like Jerry Michelek, I don't want him to hit my chronograph. So if anybody's going to hit it, it's going to be me. And of course, the last time I shot his 454, uh, I shot my chronograph. So, um, you know, it happens to the best of us, Chuk. Don't feel bad. It's that trigger. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, that triggers a hair trigger. All right. So right now we got 44 Magnum and a seven and a half inch Ruger. We're gonna shoot it over the chronograph. It's the 340 grain plus B plus Buffalo bore. Here we go. My help if I have the right. Took the cylinder turn to the right time. There we go. Here we go. 1491. 1483, 1477. That's a little light for the buffalo bore. So, um, little light, but should do well. No pressure signs. So, we're good. So, now I have his 454 um, with also the buffalo bore heavy stuff. And this has only got a five inch barrel. So is a 44 Magnum better in a seven and a half inch barrel than a 454 is in a five inch barrel? That's kind of what Chook's out here doing today. Keeping my finger off the trigger. Here we go. Again, I had the cylinder rotated the wrong way. Here we go. Now it should shoot. Come on, Chuck. Duplicate 40, 1477. It got the same thing the last one was. 1483, 1481. So they got about the same velocity given the barrel lengths. Um, maybe, the, uh, what's the bullet weight, Ch Chuk? It was 340 for the uh, 44. And what, what's it for the Kasul? Uh, let's check. 360. 360. So, three. So 340 versus 360 grain going about the same. A grizzly bear is not going to know the difference. This is easier to carry, but it does recoil a lot more. Um, so this is probably the ideal bear revolver in Alaska is the 454 toe clap. If you could get one with a threaded barrel and had it ported right here, that would be awesome. All right. Okay, this is it. Woo! Finally hit it. You missed it the first time. I did. He hit it on the first shot. It's amazing. My name is Juke. I like to train my guns just for fun, but now I have none. Oh, look at Chuck by the bear, but I don't care. I got a 10 millimeter. Shoot out adventures. Watch you go die. Every time.